Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Myers, and I am a trail ambassador and crew leader with Friends of the Wissahickon. And I'm here to talk to you today about my 2010 Appalachian Trail through hike. This year marks the 10 year anniversary of it, and I thought it would be a good idea to share that experience with you. Bear in mind, this is a shorter version of what I would normally present on this, but the focus is on a typical day in a through hiker's life, and I think it works, and I hope you enjoy it. So thank you for joining. Okay, so in 2010, on March 25th, I set out from Springer Mountain, Georgia with my partner, John. Uh, we completed the hike in Maine on October 18th. And you'll see there in quotation marks, our name was Two of a Kind. That was our trail name that we shared. And in a few minutes, um, I'll explain to you how that came about. But when I first had the idea to do this and I started to talk to people about it, their reaction was like, you wanna do what? Um, so the best thing I can tell you is that most people, in fact, everybody on the trail has a story and pretty much everybody is at a transitional time in their life uh, that makes it possible for them to do something like this. I met all kinds of people. Um, everybody's walking for their own reasons. Uh, they come from all walks of life and all ages. And I happened to meet two women, older women that had done this and they inspired me. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I was at my own transitional time. I had topped out at a job I was at. Um, I was kind of burnt out on that job. Um, I have an elderly mother here in Philadelphia, so I knew that I would eventually have to return home. So I thought, well, I'll just walk home. And I was single and I, you know, I was just by myself and I just thought, well, it's time to do something different. So my research began and there is a multitude of online resources um, for to get information on the trail. Um, there's hiker forums, there's guidebooks, and I just started pouring through those resources. And um, in the process, I met a man named John Guinta. And it turns out that John and I, even though we had originally planned solo trips, we decided to do the trail together and ended up spending the next seven years together, actually. Um, we're no longer together now, but we're great friends and we love to reminisce about this journey. So about eight months out, the planning begins. Um, I bought a dehydrator and a vacuum sealer, and I started buying non-perishable foods and supplies in bulk. And I started investing in new gear, whatever was the latest and greatest and the lightest, uh, whatever I could afford. Um, the, uh, we began to plan and pack and ship some of our resupply boxes. We figured out when we would need to change gear. Um, we arranged for boxes to be mailed by family and friends. Um, tying up loose ends, like how you're gonna get your bills paid, um, budgeting for on-trail and off-trail expenses. So all that was kind of planned um, before we started walking. So um, here we are at our typical day. And um, I would like to start taking you through that on uh, kind of what was our routine day after day. So starts with getting up with the sunrise. Um, it didn't take long to develop a routine between the two of us. So the way the morning would start for us is John would get up first usually and go take the bear bags down from the trees. And I would start packing up the inside of the tent. John would start making breakfast. I would go get water uh, and then we eat and we finish packing up the rest of the tent. And um, that's pretty much how our day started. Now, we weren't the kind of hikers that, you know, you open your eyes, you throw yourself together, off you go, and you walk till it's dark. We, we really enjoyed camp life. So we actually would have a good breakfast. And I'd say if we got up at 6, by 7.30, uh, we would start walking. And... Whatever the trail had in store for us, that was pretty much how our day went. Sometimes the trail was easy, sometimes it was not. 
Um, I can't say that I enjoyed every single day, especially as uh, time went on. And um, that much walking, you know, you start to hurt. My knees and feet were killing me. Um, and I think the hardest part for me was, you know, that's a lot of time to spend in your own head. Um, even though I went with someone, we had very different hiking styles. And a lot of times he would be ahead of me. He'd always wait. and He was always kind of with an earshot. But, you know, sometimes it was, even though we were together, it was still very much a solo experience. And sometimes that amount of time in your, in your own head, thinking about things, you know, that's not always good, you know, especially when you're doing the woulda, coulda, shoulda thing about your whole life, because we have plenty of time to think about it. But, um, you know, whenever, however bad the day went between us or for ourselves, once we got to camp, it was, you know, everything was uh, forgotten. We were pretty much a team and we would, we love to look at the pictures and talk about the different scenery that we saw. And uh, the Southern mountains, it's kind of a lot of up and down. And once you get to Virginia, it becomes more of a ridge walk. Um, Pennsylvania was a tough state because of the rocks. Um, my feet were killing me. And uh, Pennsylvania has the reputation of um, being where old boots go to die because the rocks are pretty hard on your feet and your shoes. Um, my favorite scenery was if you see the the slide on the right here, the balds. I, I just loved the balds. Um, we saw a lot of that in the southern states. Um, but the hardest walking uh, comes in New England. And by that time, you're mentally tired. Um, and uh, you just have to push through and you just keep walking, rain or shine. Um, it was not a particularly wet year when we went. Um, there had been a lot of snow early in the season, but we missed all that. It wasn't too wet, um, but if it did rain, put on the rain gear, put on the pack cover and just, uh, just keep walking. Um, so we would stop whenever we needed to. We needed a water break. We needed a lunch break. Um, it just happened right there. And um, depending on what time of year it was and how we were doing on time, we might take a, a kind of a decent uh, longer break in the middle of the day, um, especially when it was the heat of the summer. We didn't walk during the heat of the day and we would maybe try to find a place to take a nap or just chill out. Um, but, um, you know, we just, uh, it just became part of a routine to just keep walking and just a little further, we're almost there. We always kind of knew where we wanted to end up at night, um, for camp. Um, but like I said, whatever the trail had, whatever was the terrain for the day, that's what you dealt with. The slide on the left is actually in Pennsylvania that's climbing up out of Lehigh Gap. Um, I remember really thinking that was so much fun, that little rock scramble. Um, they weren't fun when, they, when, it, when we got to New England and it was a lot harder, but I remember really enjoying um, that day. And then in New England, um, you have a lot of stream crossings to do and uh, you wouldn't be able to do them without um, these kind of lines in place. So um, those were challenging and um, kind of scary, but it was exhilarating when you got through. So there was always the Kodak moments. Um, again, the slide on the left is Pennsylvania. And this is the pinnacle or pulpit. I, I get them mixed up sometimes, but that is one of the classic views in Pennsylvania. The one on the right is the iconic McAfee knob, and that's in Virginia. And that's an incredible view. Um, a little scary being out on that ledge. I wasn't real comfortable doing that, but hey, you know, you're there, you got to get the picture. So, um, so John and I like to kind of take care of ourselves and keep clean if we could. Um, unlike a lot of men on the trail, John did not let his beard get full or, or anything like that. He shaved and he had his little routine and little things that he did. And, 
And I always like to try to just clean up and I always like to soak my feet. Um, just a little bit of self care and usually just a quiet time um, to just sit along a stream. And um, so we, it was funny, we would get, uh, this happened twice, we would get a shuttle ride into town. And one time the, the shuttle driver turned around and looked at us and said, you don't smell like through hikers because, you know, we would try to keep clean. So, so um, we always would, would laugh about that. Um, so once we got to wherever it was we were going to be, um, we usually had a choice whether to stay in the shelter or um, stay in our tent. Most times we stayed in the tent, um, just a little comfortable, it was more private. Um, the nice thing about the shelters though is that there were generally, uh, they were usually around a, a reliable water source and they would have a privy, which is, you know, that was a, like a convenience. Um, but if we were the only ones and the weather was bad, we would stay in the shelter. Um, so uh, Pennsylvania actually has some beautiful shelters in, in the, the southern uh, part where the Appalachian Trail first comes into the state. Um, shelters could be new, old, um, fallen down. Um, sometimes they had mice in them. And remember, you're, you could be sharing these shelters with other people and they might be coming in or out at different times and they're snoring and farting. And <laughs> so most times we stayed in our tent because we liked camp life. And um, we would always try to arrive at camp just uh, at least with an hour of daylight left to just do the things that we wanted to do and, and take our time. Um, rinse out or maybe rinse out some laundry and, and hang a line. Um, we didn't always have a campfire like you see John working on that slide on the left um, because a lot of times you're just too tired and it just really wasn't that important and in the warmer months it really uh, didn't matter um, but this was in Maine the one on the left was it through the hundred mile wilderness in Maine and I remember that was just one of those iconic campsites um, that you see and you go, oh, I wish I could stay there. And well, we got to, so. Um, and the one on the right, I believe that's actually Pennsylvania. Um, so uh, that was um, a typical day for us. Now at nighttime, um, we had a couple things that we'd like to do at night. Um, we might, uh, we both kept journals, so we would journal. Um, we would look at the pictures, John would say, let's go to the movies, and we would look at the pictures that we took that day, and we had a Scrabble game. John made that Scrabble game. It weighed less, it was like half an ounce, and um, somewhere in Vermont, we lost the cue, but, <laughs> but we continued to play, and then once the sun went down, it was, it was good night. And um, you definitely kind of sink, uh, your, your routine sinks with the sunrise and the sunset. And um, it was generally after you got used to being out there, it was a good night's sleep. So before we wrap up, I just want to talk about a couple things, um, what I call trail luxuries. Um, these didn't happen every day, but when they did happen, it was a huge deal. And that was receiving trail magic. Um, trail magic is um, kind of think of it as a random act of kindness that someone who is not hiking does for hikers. And it could be leaving bottles of water and snacks in a cooler at a trailhead at a road crossing, or it could be like in the case of the slide on the left, that was Easter morning and we got to a road crossing and there were all these people and they were making breakfasts for everybody that came by. So uh, that was fun. And then the slide on the right, um, a lot of times the trail uh, would go through a town or if it didn't, you'd have to hitch your way into town. And John's carrying a sign that says ride to town on one side. And then we were, when we were done town and coming back 
to the trail, the other side said ride to trail. So a lot of these hiker towns, people are used to seeing hikers and they're normally pretty helpful. A trip into town was a big deal because um, it meant you were getting a shower, you were gonna sleep in a bed, you were gonna go find an all you can eat restaurant and eat to your heart's content. Um, you were maybe picking up a resupply box. Maybe we would meet some people and have dinner. And it was just a day off called the zero day. We would sometimes take just a complete day off and maybe we'd find a museum or something or something to do in the town. So that was, that was fun. Um, and you can't, not be part of a community and develop friendships and have some crazy times. The slide on the left was the very first night on the trail. Um, everybody in here started um, at Springer Mountain on the same day. Um, a couple of the people we continued to see, some of them we did not see um, after that first night. And the slide on the right, that was at in Damascus, Virginia for an event called Trail Days. And as you can see, John and I were about the same size and we had a lot of matching gear. It just worked out that way. Uh, we had the same hat, we had the same vests, we had the same little blue bags, we had the same camp shoes. And, um, but to tell you the truth, initially, we really didn't embrace this trail name thing. We thought it was just, kind of ridiculous and really weren't interested in that. And the guy that you see us with, his name was Country Gold. And he was actually the guy on the left, he was way in the back with the orange hat. Um, so one day he hiked past us and um, he turned around and looked at us and he said, you guys are like a pair of aces, two of a kind. And we didn't think anything of it. Um, but uh, as time went on and we got to this event, Trail Days, um, we walked by this yard sale on the way to this hiker parade that's part of the festivities. And John says, look at those matching dresses. We could, we could each wear one and we could be two of a kind. So they were like a quarter a piece. So we bought them. And from that day forward, uh, we embraced our name, two of a kind. And eventually in Maine, um, we got there, we did it. Um, it was a life-changing experience for both of us. Um, some hard learned lessons. Um, some of them were good, some of them were hard, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. And if I could go again tomorrow, I would. Um, if you're interested, um, that link there will take you to a trail journal, trail journal that I kept, um, that I uploaded, and um, that's, uh, that's public. Anybody can see that if you're interested. So I'd like to thank you for uh, joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it, and everybody stay healthy and be safe. Thanks. <laughs>